welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things weight loss, mental health, and take you along on my 200 pound weight loss journey. If you'd like to know more about me and my journey so far, make sure to check out the rest of my videos linked in the description box down below. As you guys can see, I'm in a little bit of a different environment tonight. I am over at my family's house. We had Sunday dinner and I am joined by this lovely lady that you also know as Mama Warrior. Hello. And tonight we are going to do a Q&A with a bunch of questions that I've gotten. And if you hear anything over in the background, that is the dogs playing and being obnoxious. Flirting. Or flirting. Which they do a lot. <laughs> um, so I've been getting a lot of questions through like the community tab on YouTube and Instagram DMs and emails and Discord. So I've got quite a list and we're going to go ahead and get started. Yay! All right. Two thumbs up. <laughs> do you, speaking of which, do you know which movie that's from? Mm -mm. You make me sad. Story of my life. My mom's not a Disney fan. Oh, here goes Lucy again. Okay. So, <clears throat> these are actually really good questions. Um, what is something Laura likes or does that you will never be able to understand? Hmm. K drama. Don't get the fad. Makes no sense to me. Not sure where she got this affection, but uh, K dramas. You guys make me sad. K dramas. <laughs> <laughs> what is Laura's biggest accomplishment? <sighs> She's had so many because she struggled. But I think her biggest accomplishment would be putting herself through college um, with straight A's for her first two degrees, her associates and her bachelor's. But then working at her master's, she actually worked full time, interned and went to school and was able to graduate summa cum laude. And that to me was such an inspiration. Um, not many people have that kind of dedication and devotion. So for me, that's one of her crowning achievements, I guess you'd say. Aw, thank you. <laughs> What's your biggest accomplishment? <clears throat> Motherhood. Aw, you have to say that. <laughs> Four children. Oh my goodness. Surviving Lucy. three teenage boys. See, there you go. That's a big accomplishment. Yes. Um, what are you most proud of Laura for? Well, I think I just covered that. The oh, yeah. putting yourself through school. Um, but sticking with it, you have a very, or Laura has a very um, positive outlook. And when she, when she goes in, she goes all in. And so that's, it's one of those, when she puts her mind to something, she's going to get it done. And and it's like that in all areas of her life, school, work, family, um, this weight loss journey. She's all in. And so. Aww. Yeah. Thank you. You can pay me later. I was going to say, this is really good boost to my ego. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, wow. A lot of these questions are about me, but there are definitely some about Thank my you. mom. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like answering questions about herself anyway, so this is really good. <laughs> what was Laura like as a baby and a toddler? What was the cutest thing she did? Oh my goodness, Lucy. Oh, now, when you open up the dictionary and look up the word sass, <laughs> Laura's picture will be there. Um, she was always advanced. She was weaned at nine, nine months, drank out of a sippy cup. She was walking before she was a year. She was just one of those that, she was a breeze compared to her brothers. She just was, yeah, she was just a darling with little black curls and just she put her hands on her hips. And I don't know if you guys have seen the uh, Facebook of the three little girl girls dancing on the stage and then the one in the middle just snaps and does this. Well, that was Laura. That would have been Laura. She'd have been the one in the middle saying, y'all, I got this. So, and that would have been at the age of one, two, three, four, five, all the way on up to 30. Mm -hmm. So, sass. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, weird. What was Laura, or who was Laura's first celebrity crush? And who was her first real life crush? Timothy Schmidt. I don't know that he's a celebrity. He is a member of the Eagles band. And he was the American Indian with the long hair. Definitely crushed on him big time. We watched the Eagles Hell Freezes Over video over and over and over and over and over. And that was her celebrity crush. Um, her first crush, I don't know that I want to say the name because I could be wrong, so. Well, let's start with G. You think he was my first ever crush? Well, see, that's how little I know about your <laughs> crushes. So, so I don't really I'm a, know. Let's just put this out here. I, I'm a pretty secretive person. She's, she was a very independent child and kind of kept to herself. I kind of had to pull teeth to get anything out of her. So, um, yeah. The first crush I know of starts with the letter G, and I will not say his name. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could eat dinner with one person, dead, alive, or a fictional, who would who would it be, and why? Dead, alive, or a fictional. fictional. Mm, that's a tough one. <clears throat> I would probably have to say my dad. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. We went to get on the plane to go say goodbye, and he had passed away before we got there, so my dad. Yeah, that was rough. Um, Who do you think I would eat dinner with? Hmm. Grandma Winter. Yes, I was just thinking that. I almost said Grandma Winter, but then I... So there would be two at my table, Grandma Winter and my dad. Yeah. Yeah. Grandma Winter. My mom is, would be there also, but she's alive. So. <laughs> she um, she was my great great grandma, and I spent a lot of time at her house after school growing up. Yeah, and she grandpa. Was, she's the one who got me addicted to um, tomato soup and crackers, and grilled cheese. <laughs> Sorry, my the peanut gallery. Also known Grandma's as Grandma, all over to the side over is here, commentating so, over here. So if you hear whispering <laughs> in the background, we don't have ghosts. We have a gym. Uh, what personality traits do you both share, and what are some that you're opposite in? Which ones do we share? Wittiness. Mm-hmm. That's um, not personality, though. That's interest. Um, yeah, I was going to say writing, but that's that's what tangible. Um, personality. Oh, we can both hold a grudge. Kinda. But then we get over it fast. I was going to say. We're quick. Okay, we're we're li- alike in that way. Like, we yeah. get angry and then we're done. Yeah, and then and it's just like it. moving on. And people, I remember the kids used to get so mad at me. They're like, can't you stay mad longer? No, I'm good. Well, she used to drive me crazy when I was a teenager because they would literally, we would get into an argument and I'd be upstairs sulking and then she'd come upstairs and be like, hey, you want to make some cookies together? Hey, you want to go to the store with me? Like acting as if nothing had ever happened. And so I think that's how I developed that trait. Let's put this out there. <laughs> I was reframing before reframing was cool. Right. <laughs> Not that we fought a lot, but when yeah, we did, it was we obnoxious because I was like, I just want to be mad. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> um, if you were an animal, what would you be and why? Um, <laughs> an ostrich. <laughs> what? <laughs> an ostrich. Yes, because so many times over the last few years, I just wanted to bury my head in the sand. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. All right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. What animal would I be? A cheetah. A cheetah? Yes, because you run fast. And you'll be like, I'm getting the heck out of Dodge. This is not for me. Yeah. Okay. All right. That works. Um, if Laura has kids <laughs> in the future, what kind of mom do you think she would be and why? That's a good question. Um, I think... 
And we talk about this in our family a lot because we've all been through trials. We've all, I think everybody can relate to the fact that there's family drama in every every home and there's dysfunction in every home, but there's also really good times in every home. And I think that uh, we take from our childhood parts and pieces of things that we want to incorporate into our life. So I think she will be a very, very much a nurturing mother, very hands-on. She's not going to be one of those that's a helicopter mom because she's going to, you know, give them the opportunity to kind of develop their personality, but then she's still going to be very, very hands-on, very in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes along with your, your therapy too, because you, you'll, she'll be able to see things probably clearer than even I could have, because there's so much I'm sure I miss, but because of your background, it'll, the, the nurturing side will be able to be freer because you're not trying to micromanage, kind of, so. Thanks. <laughs> it sounds accurate. I mean, that's the kind of mom I would hope to be. Yeah. Um, what was Laura's most embarrassing moment? Um, I, I'm trying to think of one. When you fell through the porch in Aunt Mallory's house. But nobody was around to see that. That's like the only thing. Although, okay, know. when I fell though this year, and I hurt my knee. Trenton was there. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of embarrassing. Well, there's a reason we never called you Grace. <laughs> I hurt, I fall and I hurt my leg. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. the same knee too. I fell through a porch and I hurt this knee. And then this year I fell and I hurt this knee. This knee, my left knee is just, it's cursed. Yeah. Um, what was, this is easy for you. What was Laura's best subject in school? All of them. What she number? Makes us sick. <laughs> No, All that's your other, time. your youngest child. No, that's the youngest one. I was never when good at math. When she took the Wassel in eighth grade and was one of four people in her school to actually pass and to pass like off the charts. Yeah. When they first brought the Wassel out, she was in sixth grade. It was sixth fourth. grade. Fourth? Fourth grade. I took it in fourth and yeah. I passed it. Yeah, in fourth grade, she was one of four kids in her entire school that passed the Wassel, number one, but hers was so high that technically she wouldn't have to take it again. But it's obviously something that they made you guys take every few years. But yeah, she was just good at everything. And I think it's just because her, her mindset to, to cope with things was to immerse herself in reading and literature. Mm -hmm. And so basically her studies so she made school a priority. So, but if I had to pick one subject that I think that she enjoys the most, I would say English. Writing. And yeah, because of the writing yeah. and the reading. Yeah. And history, history would be second. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm like my mom, we share a love of mythology. She got me into oh, yeah. it. Egyptology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some of your talents? Yours? Yours. Oh, I don't have any. Sorry, guys. That Whatever. Gonna... You're so full of crap. <laughs> you know, when they were handing out talents upstairs before we came down here, I think I was on a timeout break for goofing Okay, around. how about I so... do your talents and you do mine? Mm, okay. Okay, so her talents, I would definitely say writing. I definitely got my writing ability from her. Mm. Cooking. Um, she's really good at crocheting, anything like crafty, like scrapbooking. Um, mm. she's getting pretty good at photography. Mm. You really like pigment where you color, but she, she'll do the coloring, but she likes to do like the blending and like making texture and stuff. She's really good at that. Um, she's good at design, mm. marketing. I said writing, poetry specifically. Um... You we have can a lot stop of talents. now. We can stop. Okay, now. what are my talents? Now I well, can my Well, I've learned a new talent. <laughs> Video editing and uh, blogging I'm, and blogging. I'm getting better, but Yeah, but that's that's definitely a talent. Writing. Um we call her the um index queen because her little note cards, we we told her she should totally <laughs> make copies of them and sell them on Etsy or something because every every academic class she's ever taken 
she has no cards for. We're talking shoe boxes full. So she's very methodical. She's very much somebody that, when, like I said earlier, she's all in. It's, it's all in and everything has an order. Everything has a place. And um, she's an excellent cook, excellent baker, very much can do those really cool design cakes that have butterflies and fondue and all that. See, I'm just slap some icing on, but um, um, she's smart. She gets along well with other people. She's very much a people person. Some people. Most people. <laughs> there are the challengers, but for the most part, she will try to get along with everybody. So, um, She's like me, she's crafty, she, she can put floral arrangements together, she's just very hands-on. Um, writing is something though that I just, I am in awe. When you can put a 21 to 27 page paper together and make no mistakes, she sucks. I just, people like her just make me angry. I am good at writing. Um, she's very good at writing. <laughs> So she's good with animals. You've always been one to, to really be able to like soothe animals. Um, she's very artistic. She can draw, but unfortunately she had a teacher tell her that she did something wrong once and she never went back to it. However, she does have a, a distinct eye for detail. Very distinct eye for detail. So mm -hmm. she is a good artist, don't let her fool you. So, I haven't drawn in over a decade, so I'm, I'm not a good artist anymore. I can do spray paint art though. Yeah, she's just yeah, but that's what I mean. You're very you're very hands on. You're very crafty. You see something. That's another thing. If she sees something that she wants to do, she will she'll try it and she'll try it till she gets it right. Even if it's she gets angry because her first attempt wasn't good. Like me, I tried Bob Ross, couldn't do it once. Handed all my tools and supplies to someone else. Laura will stick to it and to, and just keep going until her version of what she was trying to do and what she was trying to accomplish is perfect. She is very much a perfectionist. So, did I miss anything? There's just so much. Not. I mean, I'm trying to think <laughs> of your talents and you're just, there's mm -hmm. just so many. Cooking, cleaning, organization, therapy. Yeah. Did you say cleaning? Yes. Okay, well, I, I, well, okay. I can organize really well. <laughs> there is a difference between her clean and my son's clean. And when Laura cleans, there's nothing on the counters. That Everything has a place. The boys come in, they clean. There's still food in the sink. Counters aren't wiped yeah. off. So yes, mm -hmm. her version of clean versus her sibling's version of clean. Well, well my version of clean, because I it's hard for me because I get overwhelmed because I, I'm going to clean, I want it to be perfect, and then I get overwhelmed when it's not, that's and so then I a. just give up. <laughs> that's the type A coming out. Mm -hmm. um, if your family was depicted in a movie or a television show, who would play each of your family members? I want to see who you're going to say. What were we watching the other day when we had everybody picked out? Um, oh, Downton Abbey. So, but it was for me and my sisters. Uh -huh. Like, I would have been Sybil or Mary. Well, this can be anyone, like any actors or characters that would be each of us. Okay, so each of you guys have to think of a movie, like the Brady Bunch. It doesn't have to be from one movie. It can just be, like, characters or actors that would play each person, even if they're not from the same show or movie. Okay, Keston would be Lurch from the Adams Family. I have a feeling I know who you're going to say for me. Hmm. What movie were we watching the other day when I said that Trenton reminded me of that actor? An, a younger version. I don't remember. Trenton would be like a real life version of Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo, but that's the cartoon. <laughs> this was an actual movie that we were watching. Um, who do you think I would pick you as? I just have to... to you would probably... Either Morticia or Sandra Bull. You tell me all the time that I remind you of Morticia Adams. It was Elvira. Oh, I thought it was Morticia. 
No, I'm kidding. You're not a liar either. Um, <laughs> or Sandra Bullock, because you told me you told me Sandra Bullock before. Sandra Bullock, because she's got the spunk, the sass, and the I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm going to do things my way, and mm -hmm. you know, and so Sandra Bullock. Um, but but I also see you as the character in Mama Mia, the <coughs> one that's searching for their father. What's her name? It's Amanda um, Seyfried, Amanda Seyfried but, but more because you like to sing, um, you're always on a path and a mission, so yeah, you could probably be be her, Sophia, Sophie, Sophia. Mm -hmm. So who yeah. would play you? In Mamma Mia? No, who would play you? I think Jack Black would play Dylan. Jack Black <laughs> would play Dylan. Um, <laughs> You be Meryl Streep. You can be my. No, 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 no. Brand, uh No, you can be the other lady. The, the one. tall one that dances yes. with the. <laughs> Does your you mother know you're out? Yeah, um, that one. I know. I'm trying to think because she's in. Um, she's in the Good Wife. And she's in the Grinch. It's not Christine Bransky, is it? Um. Oh. Yeah. What's her name? Okay, I'm gonna take a moment <laughs> to look this up. Who would be Grandma? Mm. Who would be grandma? You know all the Beverly Hillbillies? <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Be one of the ladies from the Golden Girls. <gasps> she would, you know who she would be? She would be Rose from the Golden Girls. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not totally turning that one down, so I think you like it. <laughs> yes, it's Christine Baranski. Yeah. Christine Baranski. I can see that. Yeah. So. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, does Laura have a nickname? Can I say it? I guess. Lala? Lala. Mm -hmm. Or Little Princess. Because she oh, was gosh. always our little princess. Yeah. Mm hmm Just start calling her Lala. Mm hmm Or Lala Anna. Lala Anna. That's we your went to Hawaiian, Hawaiian name. name. Yeah. yeah, we went to a Hawaiian church thing, and they gave you your name. At the beginning, and that was my name. Mine from my old. name tag. How do you think being the oldest child and only girl has shaped Laura into the person she is today? Mm -hmm. Wow, we're digging deep, folks. I'm Y'all I'm impressed. Much. I'm impressed this person paid enough attention to know that. I wish I had written people's names down. They'll they'll know. You could probably go back <laughs> and uh, and put their names True. with it. Um well She again. This goes back to the question that someone asked about how and what. How would she be as a mother, and what type of mother would she be? Because she was. Um, it's so warm. It is. Well, it's but I went we're, for a run. We're wearing, wearing our, our matching shirts. Shut the fuck up, cakes. Yes, mine is. And I went for a run right before this, so I'm still pretty warm. Mm -hmm. um, her. Because she was the oldest, and there was six years between her and her brother, her old, her oldest younger brother, um, she grew up helping me a lot, mm -hmm. um, especially when I was in school and stuff. So she I've changed, changed diapers, diapers, she fed them, she read to them, she played with them. Um, you could always find them sitting on her lap. So. Um, I just think that, uh, I think being the oldest and being a female by nature nurturer, most females, I will put that disclaimer out there because not everybody has that and that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think it, it, it molded her into a, a caring, nurturing individual that, uh, I don't think she ever really fought with her siblings that much. I, I just they they didn't fight a lot even now the two youngest ones it's more smack talk than anything so they really didn't fight so it was more of she just got to be a big sister and did the big sister thing yeah we've never really mm -mm. and she was always so independent so she just kind of did her thing and when the kids were around she let them do it with her she was just very much a hands-on you know you want to learn how I'm doing this so and if Laura had a million dollars what do you think she would spend it on Laura would buy a house 
and she would ad- she would adopt mm-hmm. a child or two. Grandma had my other thing. What? Oh yes, she would travel to Jerusalem. <laughs> and Japan. Maybe Japan, maybe Ireland, but not without me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, travel, home, children. Yep. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Travel the world, definitely. No, she won't. I won't let her. Moving on. If I had a million dollars, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to stop me, Mom. Just saying. Um, speaking of traveling, if you went on a mother-daughter vacation together, where would it be and why? Walt Disney World. Yes. Because, even though I'm not a big Disney movie <clears throat> fan, some of our best memories are from Disneyland. And mm. being able to go and just be free. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she shared with you some of her growing up, but vacations were a nightmare. I haven't really talked about that aspect of growing up vacations with my ex-husband were very tedious so when we're able to get away and just do a mother-daughter thing it's really cool and now that we've had that opportunity I think Mm -hmm. the memories of Disneyland just kind of come come to mind and going to actual Walt Disney World because I grew up in Florida to be able to take her there and then maybe take her to where I grew up would be a really cool um, vacation yeah what if we went abroad we went abroad, I would say Ireland or yeah. France. Ireland and Paris, yeah. absolutely. Um, except, has, except for not right now because we're in the middle of a pandemic yeah. and we can't travel. <laughs> so. This is hypotheticals. Mm-hmm. Um, have you watched Laura's How I Got Fat video? And if so, what did you think? Did anything surprise you? I don't think I've watched that one yet. I watched the intro because I kind of bounce around. Um, I know my mother's told me some about it because my mom has watched it. I'm bouncing around. I kind of got hung up on the intro one. Oh. Only come out here if you want to be in the video. You want to introduce yourself? Oh, he's got his headphones on. <laughs> um, it's the one where I talked about like my period and everything. No, I haven't watched that one. Okay. So, well, although I can, I do know about that, and mm-hmm. I. Well, this was the follow-up question: Was did you know how bad Laura's period issues were when she was younger? That's where I was going with my answer. <clears throat> I knew they were bad um, because obviously I had to take her into the doctor, and she had to go see a gynecologist at a very young age, and there were different <laughs> methods and birth controls that they tried to use with her that were unsuccessful. So I knew they were bad, but I did not, I don't think I ever grasped just how bad they were. I mean, I knew they were bad, but no, I did not um, know how bad they were. Mm -mm. Well, like I said earlier, um, I've always been very independent, kind of secretive. No, and it wasn't really secretive. It was just because of the lifestyle and, you know, where we were at as a family. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit more difficult for her to feel comfortable, I think, coming because of our family dynamics back then, I think. We had a lot going on. We had a lot going on. So I think it would have been more difficult for her to to come, come talk. So, but I didn't know they were bad. I just did not know how bad. So, what has it been like watching Laura struggle with her weight her entire life? <clears throat> Years ago, I worked. I'm a nurse. Years ago, I worked with an orthopedic surgeon, and we had an interpreter come in and looked at me, and I had pictures of my kids, and she says, oh, "I wonder how difficult it must be for your daughter." to have a mother that looks like you. And it just kind of hit me hard Cause, because I never saw her weight. I never looked at her and said, oh my gosh, you know, there's something wrong with her. Um, but I never put myself into your place as far as how you would feel. Um, I mean, obviously I helped you with diets over the years. I helped you because you wanted to do things for yourself. And so we did many you know, nutrition and many um, many diets and things like that but uh, it's 
it's been much more difficult as she's gotten older to to watch her struggle and to not be able to see that fulfillment of reaching a goal and maintaining it. I think that has been the hardest because when she won physique, she was on a high, but then they didn't, she didn't win anything. And so it was like, almost like it sucked the air right out of the high. And, and then when school rolled around and having to, you know, literally embed herself with her internship work in school, you know, old habits just kind of die hard. So, I mean, it's coping. So, um, it's, it's been difficult as a mom to, because you just want your kids to be healthy and happy and you want them to like themselves. And so, and if I'm not looking at the screen, it's because I don't like looking at myself. It's just very weird to see myself on the screen. So, um, but anyway, but yeah, it is very difficult to watch your child struggle and to know that all they want to do is be healthy and happy, so. Yeah, and she's she's never been one to try and pressure me ever mm -hmm. to like lose weight or go on a diet or anything. So. Nope. Um, I mean, I encourage you to be yeah, healthy. Yeah, you. She but. all. Yeah, you. I mean, you've sat me down. We've had conversations where you've yeah. expressed concern, but it's never been like we're gonna this do this. Else, you don't have yeah. a choice or anything like that, or like you've never shamed me or like tried to like push things on me. It's always been, if this is what you want to do, then I'll support you in it. And if you don't, then I'll keep being concerned, but yeah, because I'm support you regardless. Because ultimately it has to be, like we talk about, it has to be your decision. Somebody else telling you, you need to do this, you need to do that. Mm -hmm. We're not in your shoes, so we're not in your mind. And we can't, and we can encourage and push, but yeah. you can't force. Yeah. What is your favorite movie and what's Laura's favorite movie? <sighs> I'm trying to think if I know your favorite movie. Not the others. Please don't say the others. Oh, no. That's just a movie. <laughs> um, no, I'm trying to think of your favorite movie because you like all the Disney movies. Beauty and the Beast, I know. Um, well, that, that's not a movie, though. Anne of Green Gables is a series. That's of movies. Movie. Okay, then it's Anna Green Gables. <laughs> I was going to go with Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite so, Disney. Because it's a movie, and Anna Green Gables to me is a series, <laughs> TV series. Well, technically, Anna Green Gables is the first movie, and then there's the second and the third that have different titles, technically. so. Okay, so what's my favorite movie? Yours? Mm -hmm. I feel like Downton Abbey. That's not a movie. <sighs> That's my favorite docuseries. Favorite right? Practical Magic? Nope. We is talked it a movie? about it. We is talked about it earlier. Is it a movie you watch often? Does your mother know you're out? Oh, 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 Mama Mia. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> um, what is Laura's favorite meal that you cook? Country fried steak with mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm -hmm. That's easy. <laughs> Basically anything, anything with gravy. Southern. Anything southern like that. And know. your lasagna. I love your lasagna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But oh, I have and to be tuna fish. And tuna. Only because she makes the best tuna fish. No, 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 no. It's not that, guys. I've got this kid thing figured out. It isn't that ours is better than theirs. It's if they don't have to make it, it tastes better. True. True. See, I've got. It's made with out. love. <laughs> um, what would you say you cook the best? Boil water, oh, never burn it. Never burn a <laughs> pot of water in my life. That is my go-to meal. Um, I don't know, chili. I've won a couple cook-offs. Yes, she has. Her chili's really good, even though I'm not a big fan. Mm -hmm. I don't like beans. Chili. But I'll eat your chili. Mm -hmm. um, what is, some, this is a weird question. What is something Laura can do better than you? Everything. Oh, okay. whatever. I will just give it to her. <laughs> Everything. That's such a lie. Um, That's right. such a lie. She can write better I, than me. What? You know. Um, definitely write better than me. No. Yeah, because again, I write, I'm very technical and I can write poetry and I can whatever and I can come up with a two page whatever. Um, I market, I do things marketing wise, but when it comes to sitting down and writing 21 pages, no, mm -mm. I'd rather be doing anything but that. So, 
she can actually pump out stories and mine I'm lucky if I can get my short story to three or four pages because She's I just an amazing writer I just get bored I'm my mind is always like I should be doing laundry I need to be you know crocheting this or I need yeah so writing definitely writing baking Baking. Okay, I'll give you that one. Baking. <laughs> I, I don't bake. like to bake cookies. Although, my, she, her um, chocolate chip cookies are amazing. I just had yeah. two tonight. If I need something baked, yeah. Mm. Uh, Laura said she likes to write poetry. Have you read her poems? What did you think? Yes. And I wish I'd have known that question beforehand because I would have actually brought one with me. Mm -hmm. See, she didn't let me prepare for my test. She's a very bad teacher. Yes, oh, her her uh, poem, Holocaust. The, the Holocaust Sun, was amazing. She's and I so could nice. probably go through my emails and find a copy of it. That, that, that she's an happen. amazing, she's an amazing writer. Um, actually, um, I was on Fan Story. I was one of their top poets for a few years. I just left there I think it was last year again because I took a couple year hiatus when I went through my divorce um, and I actually posted a few of Laura's writings um, with her disclaimer and with her information and she got a lot of positive 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 feedback on her work oh that's the other thing she's a deep thinker Mm. That's the therapist side of her. I think that's, that's the, I think that's Janet. That's the um Is that Janet's side or Janet? <laughs> no, I don't think Janet's so, the deep thinker. So <laughs> So I'm so then that would be the Laura side. So Janet would Probably. Okay. All right. I just was introduced to Janet, guys. I'm new to her just as much as you are. So I'm feeling oh, this one out. Oh gosh. Yeah. Mm. No, that's probably the Scorpio side of me. Mm. I'm, what am I? I'm Scorpio and I'm Year of the Snake. Basically all the evil signs, that's what I am. Do you know what this year is? No. This is the year of the rat. And it's the end of the zo Chinese zodiac. And in the, the end of the Chinese zodiac, I just heard this, it ushers in all the nastiness. And then the next year, supposedly good comes. Because it ushers in everything from all of the other signs well, this year was definitely I nasty. am the year of the rat. That's how I know this. Mm. Somebody was sharing that with me. <clears throat> if Laura suddenly decided to switch careers, what would she become? A teacher. An English teacher. Oh, yeah. Probably. It's, it's either that or a, a pastry chef. Probably. Pastry chef or a teacher. Or a writer. An editor. Well, yeah. True. <clears throat> She has many talents, so she's... I like to edit. She's got feelers out there. Me too. <laughs> See, there's something else we have in common. I do it all the time. As a matter of fact, I was editing your brother's essays yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What are your best family traditions, and which one do you think is Laura's favorite? Um, <laughs> Christmas Eve, watching um, It's a Wonderful Life popping popcorn and drinking hot cocoa after going and looking at Christmas lights would be a tradition that I think um, is one of your favorites. It only yeah. happens once a year, unfortunately. Well, and that was back when they actually, people put up Christmas lights. Yeah, well they do now, you just have to go to the rich yeah. neighborhoods. True, So you know the rich people. Um, so. th for the kids, their favorite tradition is the ding dong ditches. And for those of you who don't know what that is, is we, I'm known as the candy woman. What do they call it? Yeah, the candy something. We make candy and cookies and we make trays and we decorate them and we sneak up to people's doorsteps, leave them on the doorstep, ring the doorbell and run like Hades, or at least my kids did. They had so much fun doing that because there was one year where there was snow and my kids were in all black and somebody opened the door too fast, so my kids face planted into the snow, and it was like this deep, so they were able to hide themselves. And the woman just yells out, whoever sent these, thank you, because I think they, at that point, we've been doing it for a few years, they came to expect them, so they, they knew somebody was going to deliver, they didn't know when, and I think people might have started to figure out who it was. We tried to create new candy every year so that it wasn't all the same, mm -hmm. and we do that every year, we come up with a new type of candy, 
Um, and I she think, took that from Grandma Winter. Yeah, I took that from my grandmother. Um, she used to deliver every year. We would get a Christmas box of goodies. <clears throat> we didn't get gifts. Um, she would make all sorts of Christmas candy and cookies, and then she would save all year for the ingredients for them. And then she had a lot of great great grandchildren and grandchildren. So we get these boxes, and it just it stuck with me. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to pass that tradition on to my children. It, it's not about the gift. It's about the time and the effort that's put into something. Yeah. You know, so. And I think another favorite one is, I mean, we haven't done as much lately after um, Trenton left, but like the Sunday night card games. Oh, games. Any yeah. kind of games on Sunday night. Cards yeah. Against Humanity. <laughs> We've never played Cards Against Humanity. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> No idea where she's going. And I've it's... never won a hand of that either. And I did not teach... Oh, you're such a liar. And I did not teach my children how to play blackjack and poker either. I'm... No, she did If didn't. they spread that lie... No. I'm it's... an angel. I See love... my yellow, it's dipping. Yeah, I love when we play the games because we're usually... I mean, we're fairly kind of like straight-laced and... But when the games come out, that's when you yeah. get people's sick, twisted humor. And it's like, I would have... Y'all are evil. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. See how dirty our minds actually are. Um, oh, wait a minute. I do, I can tell you that her videos, the one thing that I've learned from her videos that I don't normally see because I've raised her for 30 years and just never noticed this before because, let's face it, she must have hid this side, but I didn't know she cuts. <laughs> I cuss She dropped here. the B word or something, and I'm like, did she just cuss? Did Laura just cuss? I've cussed around you guys. Yes, I do. Well, you said straight lace, so I'm putting it out there. I mean, not completely you didn't that know. straight lace. She doesn't cuss very often, no. but it was really weird to hear her cuss because I'm just not used to it. It's usually part, just part of my humor. It, just it comes is. Out. It's part of your, her humor, and that's why it was like caught me off guard. I'm like, did she wait? Did did she just cuss? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are some of Laura's quirks? Oh, y'all are going to laugh at this one. Oh, no. Turkey. <laughs> Laura and raw meat don't, just don't go hand in hand at all. And one year I was out of town and I asked her and my mom to stuff the turkey for, was it Thanksgiving or Christmas? It was Christmas. And she stuffed the cavity very reluctantly, the turkey. And my mom's like, you're not done yet. And she's like, what do you mean? She's like, you got to stuff the butt. And Laura's like, what butt? I'm not sticking my hand at the turkey's butt. <laughs> so one of her quirks is that uh, her and Rami and eggs don't get along. She's got to wash her hands constantly because she will not, you will never get a meatloaf out of Laura because she would have to sink her hands into Rami and it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be a quirk. And wood. And wood, the like texture raw, of wood. Yeah. If it's not, if it doesn't it's have not the polished. shellac on yeah. it, can't touch it. Something else that's a quirk that she gets from me, and this is maybe not a quirk, but it's just mentality, is when we're writing something, if we make one mistake, even if you get all the way to the end of the paper, crumple it up, throw it mm -hmm. away, start over. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Yep, I did that in my journal. See, I've ripped a few pages out of my journal over here because of it. It wasn't neat. Yeah, so. I do that. Mm -hmm. um, I've literally thrown out things like notebooks before because it was crap. And I'm just like, I Don't can't know do this. The, therapy, the therapist and you can probably diagnose us mm -hmm. somehow. And I'm <laughs> waiting for that. So that'll be in another video. That's probably an obsessive compulsive tendency. I think we everybody has something. Yeah, we do. all have we some. We all have some, and that would be yeah. one of mine. Coloring too, when I was little, because I won a couple of coloring contests. If I didn't get my coloring right, I started over. Mm-hmm. Yep. So digitally is much easier. <laughs> I can just go into my pigment delete app it. and delete it and start over. And <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, which of Laura's siblings is most like her, and why? Hmm. I think it's a toss-up. I used to say it was Trenton, but now, yeah. the more I think it's Keston. Mm -hmm. Trenton and her have the same stick to it strive for that A. They don't want anything less than an A. Her brother, by the way, is 
a brainiac. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. The kid can do anything. And it just you just want to smack people like that and just, with a sense of humor, mm -hmm. just smack them. Um, but the academic side would be her littlest brother, Trenton. But mentality side, the independent thinker, the kind of not really introvert, but just reserved, reserved side would be Keston. Yeah. Very quiet. Quietly, they sit back and they monitor the situation. And mm -hmm. sometimes their facial expressions don't really match up to what they're saying because they're trying to trick you. <laughs> they're but, very facetious that mm -hmm. way. Very but then facetious. Dallin and I have a lot of like, then, similar yeah, interests. Dallin, yeah, you two have this, the reading and the similar interests. In the, and you're both, um, you people, you like people and you interact. So... But the one you're most like, so you guys all kind of, oh, my hair from running, it just keeps getting in my face. Um, you're, you guys are a lot alike, all of you. So you can see the family DNA is there. But as far as who you're most like is Keston. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Keston, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Say Keston. Mm -hmm. You'll and meet he's, him. Yeah, he's, he's the brother who's um, struggling. He's going through cancer right now. Tuesday will be number Ten of twelve infusions. So after Tuesday, we only have two more before mm -hmm. we have to decide on radiation. So. And that actually goes with the next question: um, How have you coped with having a twenty-year-old son who has cancer? Oh my gosh, I started tearing up. I was going to say, that was I know you're going to cry. <laughs> Let's face it: He turned eighteen a month before his first, or he was eighteen a month before his first diagnosis. So he turned nineteen in December. And he was diagnosed then that January. He had just graduated high school. He was senior class president. He was he stayed home for fall quarter. For whatever reason, we felt impressed to keep him home and not send him abroad. And had he been in Idaho, he would have been in Idaho. He would not have been diagnosed. So we they told us we would have lost him if he had come into the hospital two or three days later. So his initial diagnosis was kind of a, barely 19, not even a month into being 19. And, uh, and he, his father was battling cancer at the same time and actually passed away two weeks after Keston was released from the hospital. Coping with it when we thought he was okay and send him back to school, but then something told us again this year, don't send him back in January. It's the same thing, don't send him back in January. Two months later, he was re-diagnosed, only this time with stage four, D3-5, because it came back. Um, it's been it's been rough. It's been definitely been a, a roller coaster. I think as a, as a mom, you you're invested in whoever needs you the most at that moment. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for, for Keston, it came at a time we were in the, in the throes of the pandemic. So my youngest son didn't get to graduate, didn't get to have his senior year, didn't get to have his state run because he's a 400 meter um, track lead is what we call him. He was a district champion. Yeah, for such a big kid to be able to run that fast, it just drives me nuts. Um, He's a so giant. watching him lose out on all of that while watching my son recover from his surgery and then making plans for chemo because he didn't do chemo last time. It was only stage two. Coping, I all I can say is you just put your head down and you, you do what you got to do. We make sure he's got what he needs, we take him to his infusions, we listen to him when he's having his moments, his highs, his lows. I, I don't even know that I, there, there's even, I don't even think coping is, mm -hmm. I don't even think that's the word, because you're, it's not coping. I cope. just you feel just, like you're living in a dream, on autopilot. You, you're just on autopilot. Yeah, it's, de there's definitely some, there's been some scares, and there's definitely been some hard times, but having a daughter that I can call and vent mm -hmm. to, and a mom who lives here, and a supportive husband who stepped into the role of a dad and never looked back. The kids go to him sometimes before they come to me. I mean, he's definitely been a lifesaver. I, I just think autopilot, um, 
Nobody plans to hear a diagnosis of colon cancer in someone so young once, let alone twice in a year. And so, there are only a few moments in my life that I remember like detail for detail, like perfect clarity. The first one is 9 11. I remember where I was when that happened. And the second one is when Keston called me at work and told me that he had cancer. Like, I. He wouldn't let anybody call, he made all the calls. And I thought he was joking. Like, I honestly was like, seriously, Keston, yeah. you know, I, it never even dawned on me that that was what he was going to say. And I just, I broke down. I was out, I was out in the hallway and I just bust into tears when he told me that. And Misty came out and she hugged me and I literally had to go back into the meeting and my supervisor was like, do you need me, you know, do you need us to like do you need to talk about it or do you need us to distract you? And I was like, I just need you to talk about anything else because I, I can't do this right now. When the doctor came in and gave him his diagnosis, he almost got sent home four times over those two days. And they just kept saying, no, we need to look at this. No, we need to look at that. But they were going to send him home because they initially thought he had um, appendicitis. Mm -hmm. um, the doctor came in because they couldn't complete his colonoscopy because the tumor was so big. Um, they couldn't even get a pediatric scope through. He, um, the doctor left the room and my son looked at me and it's a question you never want a child to ask you. And he said, am I gonna, am I gonna die? Am I gonna, am I gonna make it? And I just looked at him and I said, I think he said, am I gonna die? And I said, I don't know. I couldn't tell him yes and I couldn't tell him no because I didn't want, my brother passed away in 2011 and the last thing I told him when he asked me, am I going to make it? I said, yeah, they're just going to do this surgery. They're going to get it right this time. Last time they messed it up. You're going to wake up and everything's going to be fixed. And he passed away that night. And so I couldn't tell my son that he was going to make it. And so that's, a, that's something you never want to have to... And then to have it come back and come back with such force and with such, they said this time it was so much more aggressive. It, he, actually, he actually lost a portion of some other organs because of the signet rings that it sent elsewhere. And it came back because they left cancer cells behind. It wasn't because of, it was a reoccurring. It was actually something that was left behind. And so it was, it's definitely been a difficult situation. Sorry to bore you guys with it, but... Uh, Definitely coping. I don't think there is a coping. It's just autopilot until you get to the other side. It's just autopilot and then once it's over and you get through it, then you can sit back and go, damn, that was a wild ride. And I'm only saying damn because she used it. It's okay. <laughs>